Are you one of those people who love a garden but complain because you don't think you have enough sun and you have way too much shade to have anything beautiful? Huh, let me prove you wrong. You know, if you have a shady area in your garden, you're probably always scratching your head and going, what am I gonna plant here? Grass won't grow, certain plants won't grow, there seems to be a limited plant palette. If you're looking for color, you think, well, the annuals that I can plant are pretty limited. You can do caladiums, you can do begonias, you can do impatience. But what about a shade garden that comes back every year? But you always have the bones of a garden. That what's there is going to last in the way of shrubs, in the way of perennials and ground covers. You know, a garden doesn't have to be full of color to be a beautiful garden. There are other aspects of it that can give it lots of soul, such as texture. Let's walk over here and take a look at some perennials you might want to consider that'll come back every year in your garden. Now I said perennials, but we'll get to those in just a minute. I think it's important to think about the structure of a garden. And even in a shade garden, you need forms that will create garden spaces and pull the eye in certain directions. You know, one of the great shade plants is the hydrangea. And there's so many to choose from. And you know, when you talk about shade, there are different types of shade. There's light shade and really, really dark shade. If you get a little bit of light in, the range of plants that you can grow is really actually pretty wide. Azaleas love shade. Many Sasanqua camellias love shade. Other types of camellias. Also rhododendrons of all types. Certainly hollies and boxwoods. So there are all kinds of things that you can plant to give your garden some structure that will always be there. Now let's talk about those perennials, meaning plants that will come back year after year after dying back once they get cold. And let's start with hosta. Now I grabbed a couple of ferns just to illustrate something for you as I approach hosta land. Now let's talk about this classic perennial. Just look at the range of hosta you see here in this garden center. Hostas can be very tiny, up to really ginormous hostas. There's one called Empress Wu, which has leaves that are this wide, really very impressive. So if you're looking for texture and a bit of color contrast, you can go with some of these that are slightly variegated. The broad leaf of the hosta is perfect to use with ferns. And I picked up this fern, which is one of my favorites. It's one called Autumn Fern. The reason for that is that it has this beautiful bronze coloring to the fronds of the fern. This particular cultivar is called Brilliance. And just look how beautiful Brilliance is, or this bronze color is next to the chartreuse hosta. So with color like this, why do you really need blooms? And remember, these two plants are very perennial and they're gonna come back year after year. And this is just scratching the surface when it comes to ferns. There's so many to choose from. One of my favorites is maidenhair fern, and another one is royal fern. And why don't we take a look at some heucheras, because these are great perennials where there's been a lot of advancements made in the breeding of them. That's right, they do breed plants, and they come up with some outstanding varieties. So just take a look at this small section of heucheras or coral bells. You've got chartreuse here, You've got some that almost are pink to terracotta in color. These have a silvery, almost iridescent color to the leaf, back to some that are very terracotta in color. These almost are bronze-like, and just look at these. I love this color. This will go gorgeous with any sort of pink flower. And then back to another type, which is a chartreuse variety that has a bit of a pink vein to it. You see, heucheras are a Native American plant where they've done a lot of crossbreeding to get all of these interesting colors and veining patterns in the leaves, which just adds one more lovely plant to the palette of plants that we can use in our shade gardens that will come back year after year. And let's not forget about ground covers because they're very reliable and very beautiful. Some even bloom like this old classic called Vinca Minor. This one's called Bowles Blue and has a beautiful blue flower. Or this Mondo Grass, which is beautiful in Asian style gardens. It also comes in a color called Black Mondo, which is really, really dark green. And one more for you to consider is Strawberry Begonia, one of my favorites. It's old fashioned, has beautiful leaves, 
and a gorgeous little delicate flower. And of course, you don't have to have any plants at all if you have a shade garden. You could have a water feature like this, but that's a whole other subject. If you're enjoying following these ideas about style and how to make your outdoor living spaces more beautiful, check in with us regularly and subscribe to He Out Home.